Space, 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 space. The year is 1927, and one H.P. Lovecraft has just done the impossible. He just invented a new color in The Color Out of Space, a short tale of unspeakable horrors brought about by a colored meteorite which no one can identify, bringing about pestilence and death to all who get near it. And what did this new color look like? We don't know. Nicolas Cage wasn't invented yet. Space. Space. The year is now 2019, and one Richard Stanley has reinterpreted the color out of space as a Nicolas Cage movie. Because it's a movie this time and not just written words though, the titular color has to actually be shown to us. And so, the color they chose to use was... Magenta. And everyone who was in on the reference went, Ha ha, or, oh how clever. For those who didn't know though, there is a myth which has pervaded for some time, up until today in fact, that magenta is not just abnormal compared to its contemporary colors, but not even a color at all. The myth goes a few ways, but the most common explanation for this statement is that our brains have no other way of interpreting it, so they simply make it up. This non-color magenta myth has really taken root in recent years, but especially after a certain article was published back in 2007. Titled, Magenta Ain't a Color, the article was written by one Liz Elliott and posted on the site biotele.com, a site which looks like this, by the way. Naturally, I was intrigued. In this article, Liz states how the visible spectrum works, what complementary colors are, and how our brain interprets colors to begin with. All things which I will come back to later. To quote her directly, her argument boils down to this. Our brain has apparently constructed a color to bridge the gap between red and violet, because such a color does not exist in the light spectrum. Magenta has no wavelength attributed to it, unlike all the other spectrum colors. The light spectrum has a color missing, because it does not feel the need to close the loop in the way that our brains do. People then took this article and ran with it, creating articles of their own with the data presented, and just like that, magenta was now disqualified as a valid favorite color everywhere. Most of what she says here is true. Color in general is very confusing, and it's a lot to take in when considering how many aspects to it there actually are. So here's my crash course on the matter. Color as we know it is all made up of what our brains interpret it to be. The human eye seems very complex, but essentially, it's able to see through the use of what we call rods and cones. Rods sense black and white, allowing us to interpret what is and is not light. The cones, on the other hand, allow us to see color. There are red, blue, and green cones in most people's eyes. I say most because some people are freaks, or mutants, or diabetics. Thus, normal eyes can absorb everything within the visible spectrum. Color, stripped down to its bare bones, is radiation, traveling at different wavelengths measured in nanometers. Very small. These wavelengths are measured by the distance between the repeating humps, called troughs, and crests. The shorter the wavelength, the closer you'll be to the violet end of the spectrum. The longer the wavelength, the closer you'll be to the red end of the spectrum. The spectrum visible to the average human is roughly between 400 to 700 nanometers. Anything past these two sides is beyond human sight and that's where ultraviolet and infrared come into play. Everything you see on this band here is what is referred to as the visible spectrum. It comprises all of the colors that the average human eye can take in and interpret. Anything from red to violet is what is called a spectral color. Now, let's discuss how things are colored within our world. Everything absorbs light to some degree. Garfield, for example, absorbs all wavelengths except orange. And as such, the orange that bounces off of Garfield goes back into our eyes, giving us the iconic god and part-time comic character we worship today. You could say that Garfield is technically every color except orange, because he absorbs all those colors. Because you'd technically be right, but you'd also technically sound like a douchebag. It goes like this. Light is created. Light travels to a thing. Thing absorbs what colors it can. Remaining spectral colors bounce off of things into your eyes. Your cones take in that information, 
They send it to the brain, and the mind's eye displays what it sees based on the information taken in. See? Colors are easy. Take that, God. But where the fuck is magenta? Going back to the original article, when using a prism, a tool used to break down white light into its base spectral colors, just look at Isaac Newton here, with said white light, magenta is indeed nowhere to be seen. However, when you take two prisms and align them so that the opposite ends of each line up, magenta. This was not originally in the article per se, but to be fair, it is something that was later edited in, seemingly by the owners of the website, to clear up confusion and not look crazy. To be clear, Liz Elliott and the owners of Biotele's somewhat edited argument is that magenta is the only color that does not exist as a single wavelength of light. In other words, they say it is a non-spectral color. And about that last part, they are right, but only partially, because magenta is not the only non-spectral color. I think there's some confusion happening here on the significance of how wavelengths are measured. Whereas spectral colors like yellow, red, or orange can be measured in nanometers on the visible spectrum, non-spectral colors pretty much can't be. If we were to take the base components of magenta, the wavelength of violet, 400 nanometers, and the wavelength of red, 700 nanometers, and we put them together, we would get a combined wavelength of... 400 and 700 nanometers, I guess. Wavelengths don't add together to create bigger wavelengths, you see. Nor do they subtract or become something new to measure at all. This argument that our brains made it up falls flat because the process through which magenta is processed in our heads is no different than how our minds interpret red, blue, brown, pink, violet, beige, or anything else. And magenta is certainly not the only non-spectral color. Allow me to introduce you to the Commission Internationale de l'Eclairage 1931 Color Space, or CIE for short. As the date would suggest, this was put together in 1931 after the CIE, as it's abbreviated incorrectly for some reason, organized a meeting to set in place an internationally agreed upon colorimetric specification for wavelengths in the visible spectrum that linked psychologically observable colors to the human mind. And here's how it works. Every point along the curved line that runs from the left to the right represents a single wavelength, i.e. your violets through to reds. These are colors at their most pure, being at exactly the frequencies needed to create a beam of pure white when completely combined. The bottom line here, however, represents colors which are not pure, i.e. non-spectral colors, i.e. colors with multiple wavelengths. The reason? This bottom line is just a connection between violet and red, and all the frequencies between them. This is where magenta lies, exactly between 380 and 700 nanometers. But that's not all, because magenta is not the only color which exists in this realm. If you were to take two spectral colors along this curve and connect them together, the resulting midpoint between them would not only be their combined color, but it would also be another non-spectral color. Meaning, everything that is not on this outside curve is a non-spectral color. So, by the logic of the original essay, everything within this blob and bottom line is not a real color. But it goes deeper than even that. See, what we have here is what the average human is capable of seeing at its most intense and saturated. Most of what we see in terms of colors day to day though, is polluted by another wavelength or light source. Even though something may seem green, it could only be truly green if it was emitting pure green light or was an object absorbing 100% of all other spectral colors. And unless you're looking at an LED, most objects don't really do that. Meaning all colors we see are usually non-spectral to some degree. Would you like to know what else falls inside of this locus? The entirety of the RGB and sRGB color spectrum. In other words, everything currently displayed by your computer, phone, tablet, television, etc. is by the logic of the original essay and those who believe it, not a real color. Spectral colors are like primary paint colors. They mix to create new colors. Mixing two paints does not suddenly create anti-paint because colors are by their definition 
all in our heads. Magenta is not an anti-color, it's just pure red and pure violet mixed, just as most colors we see are to some degree. The locus is helpful because it's all nicely contained in a shape where we can see almost everything with the exception of darker colors. The actual spectrum though is a range which extends in a near infinite amount in each direction beyond what we could ever possibly see. Color is just a word, and it's one which is open-ended because we made it up. It makes sense then that people would get confused or misled on what is and is not one. Just be consistent with your definition. Please. It seems that the owners of Biotele have since tried to correct this error through the previously mentioned amendment which states that a better title of the essay would have been Magenta is not a spectral color. So they have corrected the error somewhat, though it seems they're still off on multiple points, such as the definition of how multiple wavelengths work and the fact that there are a nigh infinite amount of other non-spectral colors. However, I doubt they intended to cause any misconceptions when writing the article, and they definitely didn't intend for it to enter the cultural zeitgeist in the way it did. They simply made an error, and that's nothing to get mad over. However, it seems to still be a commonly held belief that magenta is not a color at all. So I'll leave you with this. If we weren't evolved enough to see magenta, it would become indistinguishable from violet or red. It would be like being colorblind, but everybody's in on it which is how things beyond our human visible spectrum work already, I suppose. And if magenta was truly made up by our brains, we would all describe it in different ways, not this violet red we all agree upon. Yet, we do see it, and we see it as its own unique, beautiful thing. And that is the distinction. And that is why magenta is a color. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Thank you.